Jeffrey Jeffrey TV coming to you live on Memorex from undisclosed location. Wow, this thing is all off sideways. I don't care. Y'all can look halfway. Christian. The whole reason, and I, I can floss, and, but I can also floss with honesty. The whole reason that I fired this up like this right now on my lunch is to show that I can go a half hour on this damn glider. I can do it easily, and I'm proud of that. And it, I keep, I remind myself of that, and it hits me every now and then that I can get on this thing and just go for 30 minutes, you know, without blinking. Well, maybe not necessarily blinking, because I am facing away from the clock. If I turn my hair that way, I can see the clock. I got the phone in my pocket counting my steps, and I'm using that, the step counter as my metric. I'm not sure if that's the best metric or the best way to do it. And also with this glider, there was some concern about how it may be too easy of an exercise that after six or seven months, the ex it had just become too easy. So I was trying to find different ways to make it harder, like leaning forward where I'm using a lot more arm strength and I could probably kick higher you know, like that. I'm definitely using a lot more arm strength or lean back. And I'm also, when I lean back and do stuff like this, I'm trying to stretch my back and shoulder muscle for when I, that, that whatever tension or pinched nerve or whatever is going on with that thing. And also with this one, I have this, this new glider. This is the, my third day having it. I think it came Tuesday. Wait a minute, it just came yesterday? Today's Wednesday, right? Wait a minute, I only had that for one day? Today's Wednesday? And it came Tuesday. So I only had it yesterday and today. That's it. Seemed like I had it more. I thought this was my third day because I was thinking to myself again, not bragging. I guess I was bragging to myself that every day I've had this, I've done my 10,000 steps on it completely. I didn't do too much walking. I think I might have walked one day. I'm not sure, but I did 10,000 steps on this thing every day that I had it from the first day it came. I set it up and I think I did 10,000 steps. I forget how it went. But anyway, I'm gonna get on here and actually talk to y'all and to be talking, cause you know, I love talking, I love talking, getting the commentary down and then letting y'all see me do 30 minutes on the glider. Like it's nothing, look at me. I can go faster, I can go slower. And what I was saying was this little thing right here, I don't know if you can see, it's like a little computer. It's like a little cheap gadget, gadgety computer where you put like a, a set of magnets on the crossbar that, you know, goes back and forth with the rowing motion of the handles here. And it swings past other sensors. It gives you kind of an idea of what you're doing. Like I said, it doesn't have to be accurate. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but it gives you indication. So what I do is... I'll stop it on speed, quote unquote speed. I've probably talked about this before, but it's so exciting to me. I just love it. I just love it. Actually, this space. I love everything I'm doing. Whatever I'm doing at the moment, I love it. Even if I don't love it, even if I don't like it, I love it. To me, life experience is just, it's, it's a heaven for me. Life is a heaven for me. And I say that meaning that Pretty much everything in my life is either accepted, understood, enjoyable. Everything, in, I can say accepted and understood. Right now, as I can speak, as I talk. Right now, everything that's going on in my life is accepted and understood. And pretty much in line with the harmony or synchronicity or alignment of my life and my beliefs, what I believe, what I think, how I see life. One thing I've said, I've said before, that I've seen people and got to know them and got to know and, un, and got a little bit of insight into how they think and how they saw things. And I've seen these certain people where their reality or their perception does not line up with the world that I see. 
And some people I look and I can see their their perception and their outlook or whatever, their reality is just misaligned. It's just not accurate. But how can I say that? I can't say that for somebody else because everybody's reality is unique. It's just, that's one thing I agree. I agree. I don't think there's a universal reality. And if there is, we'll never be able to see it. I don't even think two people can get together and actually agree on the totality of reality, let alone 7 billion, 8 billion now. So I've seen people that where they'll say something like, um, this institution does that. Or when you do this, this happens. And I'm like, in my experience, that's not the case. And in fact, that's the way you do it. No, no. In fact, that's not the way you do it. <laughs> you know, to be successful. And successful is relative. You can tear, tear me apart when I say successful. Being lazy. I should say, that's not the way that I've seen it done to accomplish your intention. The success can be, successful could be failing. You could be successful in failing, even though you intended not to. So success, I mean, everything is so relative. And, 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 and obviously, so we can have conversation, we need to break some things down. But let me go back. See, this little thing has a meter on it for speed. And I try to keep it at 5.5 or kind of keep it at four. And there's ways you can go back like this. And even though I'm going faster, I'm not swinging as much. See, even though I'm going faster and putting more pressure and doing this, I'm not swinging as much. So it varies between 5.5 and 3.3. But if I hit a sweet spot like right here and I keep going, I'm like 5.5, 5.4, 5.3. 4.5 miles an hour, I guess, whatever that means. So I've seen people whose idea of the way things are just don't line up with what I see. That's the best. I, I mean, that's probably the most I can say. I can't say that they're wrong. That things just don't happen that way. You know, even though that's probably what I mean, I know that I can't objectively say it because everything in my life is so subjective. And that's what I meant by happy, by me being happy and things align or accepted and understood in my life. I mean, because and I worked to eliminate the things that I didn't want in my life to separate myself from things I felt threatening or made me uncomfortable. So I said all that to get back to the point of where that no matter whatever I'm doing at any given moment, it's the best thing in the world. It's the bee's knees. Whatever I'm doing at any time of the day where I'm at, I mean, I could be at my mother's house, just getting up, and she calling me, and I'm not a caregiver, we went through that before, but I have a regiment. And I'm not used to being distracted from the things I want to do. I'm, it's very hard for me to compromise. It's very hard for me to compromise. A lot of times I'll just give in. I'll just say, oh, forget it. You know, I'll give in. That's not compromising. Compromising is having your head in the game and working with another person or a situation to where you have to give something up, something of significance up. And kind of going, ah, what the hell, go ahead. Isn't quite like that. Compromising takes work, and I'm not sure if I'm capable of that. So the little things that do bug me, I even look back and smile at. You know, when she calls me to do something, I'm like, oh, God, this is just not me. It's just, I'm just, whatever it is, somebody asks me to do something, I go, ugh. My natural inclination is go, ugh, what? You know, and then I think about it, and it's not really that bad, but my initial reaction is that. So, and even with my mother... You know, me and her, I think it's a mother-son thing or mother-parent thing, mother-father, whatever thing. And me and her go back and forth. There, I do have a natural instinctive inclination to disagree or to pull back from her. To like, oh, and even at 60 years old, knowing she done did more for me than anybody in the, in the world, 
and she has my best interest at heart that many, many, many times she has told me things that I just thought were just completely out of, out of I mean, off the grid. Th told me things that I thought that, that just didn't match the understanding of what I saw and what I wanted to do. And I just dismissed it and have it turn around and come back and be right. And I tell her when it happens, I say, oh, yeah. Remember you said blah, 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 blah. You were right. I mean, I can admit when I'm wrong, but I also can't deny that feeling I have when I'm not triggered, but that feeling I have, that initial reaction, no matter how incorrect or, you know, un, uh, un non-productive it may be, even though it may be non-productive and whatever it is, I don't want to say negative, but, you know, even though it may be not the best reaction, I still got to stand behind it because it's real. It's just not, I'm not faking. That, that reaction is really like, what? You know, and no, I'm not anger, but like, oh, my. Because I know I got to go in there and do it. You know, it's not like I, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go in there and fuss. And I'm going to say what I got to say to probably even, I'll even say it. I probably, many times I've said stuff and said I probably shouldn't have said that. I just can't help it. I just got to say it. It's just who I am and what I am. And we go back and forth. You know, because I think there is some of that in certain families where you go back and forth. You know, everything ain't all peaches and cream and especially my family. Oh, God, they love woofing at each other and talking crazy. Not talking crazy, but just talking tough with each other. You know, it's just maybe a ghetto thing, a black thing. or just maybe our family. And I've seen other families do it, too. But, you know, it's just it's, it's, it's playful. It's like a dysfunctional form of affection. You know, it's like when you're in the, in the cool group, you can call each other names and do stuff like that. It's a sign of togetherness of that. You know, I trust you enough to allow you to get away with that kind of stuff. But you know, so me and her, we go back and forth. You know, it's not like, it's never, oh, anything else I can help you with? Oh, here, let me get that for you. Oh, okay, anything you want. Because she be telling me, what did, she is like, a, um, um, she needs help and stuff, physically, but mentally she's just sharp and she can hear everything. <laughs> so nothing gets by her. And my patience, is her talking is a little slower or whatever, and my patience just ain't there. When I wake up in the morning, put my shoes on, get ready for work, my day is slotted. I got every, just about every minute appropriated. So when I get going and I walk downstairs, I'm on a mission already. You know, I'm just trying to get to do what I got to do. And I'm not used to accommodating or compromising, you know, what I do, but I'm learning. And I, and I sit up there and I'll go, oh, you know what? You need to get your ass down there and ask her before you even start. You know that you done did this too many times before to put yourself in a position to where you're going to be tripping because you know you got to go down there and take care of your mother. Now, I even I even hit myself with that. And even I hit myself with that and I'll still go, ugh. Cause I'm like, I'll pay anybody. I'll pay anybody any amount of money just so I don't have to do that. And that is a fair and reasonable workaround or fair and reasonable solution to where I'll pay, I'll pay. I'll pay my niece, I'll pay the caregiver that we assist with. I'll just pay anybody just so I don't have to do it. It's not about me giving, it's more about me doing. I don't know if that's correct, but it sounded good, didn't it? And I'm also busting a little sweat on this thing. See, I'm, right now I'm going, it says 5.1. Now it went down to 4.1, 4.3. And I can go a little faster. So it may not look like I'm going fast on this, but I'm doing some stuff. You know, I'm definitely getting some stuff for this 20 minutes. So y'all seeing me do this, talking, and just gonna work out for a half hour during my lunch. And then I stop, I go back, I'll, I'll grab something to eat, like a dinner, a late, a early dinner, light early dinner, and I eat between calls. So, and then my next break, I'm back on it. Go to the bathroom between calls. Never use break to go to the bathroom unless it's a sit down. And then you can, you know, you have to use it. But you, know, you just had to work between it. So my day is just going. So it's like wake up and put my shoes on and I put my shoes on. In fact, in fact, the, the, last week when we, when we stayed at my mother's house, my daughter was here, my granddaughter was here, my aunt was here. We stayed at my mother's house. 
It was the first time <coughs> since working from home that I worked in my pajamas and didn't get dressed. It was the first time ever in like two, three years because I have a regimen. Get up. It's like symbolic almost, ritualistic. The way I get dressed, put my shoes on, put my shoes on. It's like it's like it's time to go. It's go time, you know, and then put shoes on, exercise, do, do lunch. I just got it all down, you know. Like last week was the first time that I didn't get dressed, didn't put on like my dress pants, not dress pants, but work pants. They're not definitely not dressy. They're definitely not dressy, but they're the designated work pants that when I put them on, I know it's time to work. And I put on a certain shirt, a little better shirt. And like today is Wednesday, so we had a meeting. So that's why I had to put this black on because I had a green shirt on and I didn't want it to green screen. So I put this on and you know, we don't have to wear a shirt with collars or anything, but oh, I'm breaking a little sweat. That's good, I'm, I'm breaking a little sweat. But look, it's 5.09, I probably was going, I'm not even sure how long I've been going. I can tell you how long I've been going. I just hit that, I'll tell you in a minute. It says I'm 1.24 miles, whatever that means. I'm not sure I believe it. 16 minutes. So 16 minutes, so I got like 12 more. I set my timer for 28. It'll ring. And then that'll give me like two minutes to get back to the console there and log in. It says 142 calories. We don't believe that. I like to, um, yeah, I like to leave it set on the speed because I don't want to see the time and I don't want to see any metric to see how long I'm going. I just want to go. So the whole thing, like I said, was to get on here, show y'all that I'll do a half hour on this thing. And I can remember it was a time where I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And the physical part was part of it, the physical stamina, but it was mostly a mental thing. I just couldn't keep my mind into it long enough without feeling tired and lazy, just tired and, oh, I want to stop and oh, it'll be so easy to stop. And, but now I can, you know, I get going. In fact, the more I go, the more I get into it. My, my speed will pick up. You know, I'll get loose or something. My speed will pick up and I'll keep going. And I say all that, I say all this, it, it probably goes with my happiness and my contentment my overall just joy and pleasure that I have with life and enjoyment in life, exercise. Oh my God, exercise. If you ain't exercising, well, I can't say that. See, I can't say if you ain't exercising, you ain't doing it right. That's the sound bite. You know, that's the cute little sound bite. But I don't, I try not to talk that way. I, I try not to talk that way. I, I just have to talk in statements that are they can't be torn apart based on generalities. So I would say, for me, exercise changed my life. It may have been the final piece of the puzzle. I may be in the best shape, mentally, physically, spiritually, psychologically, that I have been in my life. And exercise was the key because, especially since I stopped working desktop support, I've been working at where I'm working at now for about eight years, if I could be eight years, December. I was a contractor for four of them, but before that I was desktop support. So I was able to like walk around, you know, go around desk to desk and move around the building. But help desk, you just sit the whole time. So I definitely had to find it, get into exercising. Cause we need, I think we need exercise. Human beings, our lives have changed to the point that we don't get enough physical activity. And I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have to. And in this form, I think I, I, should be, uh, I, I should be able to, whatever that means. America's a beast. I go back home, Ohio, everybody's, everybody's overweight and obese. I hear California, not so much. And there's nothing wrong with being obese. You know, we need all kinds. So I'm not, going, I'm not condemning it but I'm not gonna condone it either. It's not fat shaming. People talk about, you know, women and their weight and fat shaming, but there's also, 
it seems like you're giving excuses for people to be unhealthy. And you have to draw the line somewhere. You have to draw a line somewhere. You can't, well, you don't have to do nothing. Again, how I talk. In my mind, I draw lines. I mean, sure, everything can be, like, person A can be good, a good person. But if they do something bad, they still did something bad. You, you don't get a break. You got to draw a line. There's only certain things. You have to draw lines. You have to set boundaries and you have to, everything can't be, oh, oh. You have to, there has to be in your own mind, well, it don't have to be nothing, but I think a person should set boundaries of right and wrong for themselves. Not from a book, even though you can get it from a book and you can believe in it and you can say you believe in it, but you have to take ultimate responsibility for what you believe is right or wrong. A book, a scripture, a teaching, a science, a methodology, anything. You have to still make that final decision. You can't just say, oh, the Bible says it, so that. No, you have to say, I believe what the Bible says, therefore I believe this to be true. It's not true because the Bible says it. I just use the Bible as a reference because that's like the ultimate reference. That's like the scripture of life that a lot of people you know, base life on and our understanding of life and what life could be and what life might not be. So I just threw that out there and I'm just talking. I'm busting a sweat too. Feels good. I think when you bust a sweat, that means you're actually burning calories. See, so and I see I'm doing, I don't know. It may not look like I'm doing much on this, but if you can see my feet, they swang it. If you can see my feet, they swanging back and forth. I probably should pull back so you can see more. But I've been doing this for what? About 20 minutes now. Going on 20 minutes without stopping. And before, see now I can even get looser. See, now that I'm warmed up a little, I can just start doing some more. And I like to scoot down, bend my knees, and get more. Just, just make it harder. You know, to burn more, just to make it harder. Get on this thing. And, do 30 minutes, and I gotta say, I remember I couldn't do five minutes on it. I'd be like, oh, it's just too hard. It's just boring. It's just, oh. Now, I get on this thing. I may throw on some music, or I throw on this recorder, and just start talking and going. And then you hit the zone like I'm hitting now, to where you got a little sweat going. Your body's nice and warm. You know, you're like in a groove and you just got your eyes closed and you just go, you know. It feels good, you're burning calories, you're thinking about Mr. Scale, you're thinking about what you're gonna eat after you get off work. Actually, you think about what you're gonna eat as soon as you get off this damn thing. Cause I try to eat lunch after this, which may not be the move, but since I stay up to like one o'clock in the morning, I don't want to eat too early because I'll eat again. And the last few nights I've been eating again, getting out of bed and actually cooking stuff <laughs> at 12, 30, 1 o'clock at night. Put some wings, hot wings, my Winganza, best wings in the world, Winganza, W-I-N-G-A-N-Z-A, -N -N find them. I don't know what they do to them damn thing, but these things are the best. Put them in the air fryer and boom. I'm telling you, these are the best. Meaty and the way they come out. And, and I do it right frozen. First I was frying them. Cause I thought it would, you know, do it quicker and faster. But I was actually frying them in grease. And now I said, let me try putting some of these in the air fryer. And I did. I'm gonna get my mother air fryer. So I have one out there. I already, they got it. I took my, the glider she bought back there cause my sister's staying there. She can use it, so when I go there, I can use that glider. Cause I can't live without my glider. I can't live without my exercise. So even though the other day I did walk some, probably about 1,500 steps during my break. First, I hadn't walked in a long time. My foot didn't act up as much. My foot didn't, you know, didn't pain me as much. Especially like in the, when it was first bad, it was to the point I could barely stand up on it when I wake up in the morning. So, 
I wish you could see how fast I'm going because it's probably I'm making this probably look easy. Huh. I'm making this look easy. But I'm getting it. 5.4. And just to keep doing it. Just watch me do this for a whole half hour. Every day. Every day. And then before work, hour and a half. Usually hour and a half on the bike or walking. And that's kind of faded. I need to get back into it, but I've been staying up later and sleeping in. Another thing I've been doing is not showering, <laughs> but I do need to start brushing my teeth. I do need to start brushing my teeth at night before I go to bed and when I get up. Now I'm just like waking up, getting up, getting on, the, getting on this and, and starting work. Getting up, throwing some clothes, same clothes I had on yesterday, whatever. Getting on this and just go to work. Cause I'm not seeing anybody, I'm not being social. I won't be going out. And another thing I do is the lights on, every light in the house on. But at least now I closed the bedroom and bathroom doors cause I think it was getting drafty. So I cut those lights off. I keep every light in the house on as high as I can get them. I'm thinking about buying more lights. If I got this light above me right here on that I never cut on, I had never cut on before. But I got them all on. And what I do is I close the patio curtains before it gets dark outside. So I never see it dark outside. And I think that helps keep my energy up and not being so lazy, keeping the place warm, don't get cold, and just keep exercising. And it seems to be working, you know. And I keep that winter, the winter blahs or the winter hibernation feeling away. That and planning some travel helps. <laughs> That and a good, you know, travel trip upcoming helps and like little things you got to do to keep your mind in life and chores and whatnot. But yeah, so I wish you could see how I'm getting down because I am It's because I'm making it look easy. See, now if I was really concentrating, just really go at it. See, without talking. We actually got to focus because I want to keep everything aligned and keep everything in motion. See now, see this is, woo, look at that, 28 minutes. See that? 28 minutes without blinking. I'm still, and I'm speeding up. See that? At the 28 minute mark, I'm speeding up. Woo. Anyway, swinging on y'all two times. For me and for the funk. And for every elementary particle that's ever existed in any atom, in this, or in any universe that ever was, is, or will be. It's about the totality of it all, y'all. An hypothesis of all is one. A theory of universe. It's about all of it. I forget what I say, all of it. How do I forget what I say? It's all about all of it. I forget what I was supposed to say. Anyhow, so we're going to look at a little sweat. See that? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs>